Do you want a man for president who's seasoned through and through? But not so doggone seasoned that he won't try something new. A man who's old enough to know. And young enough to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. So JFK, former senator, senator for Massachusetts, he promoted the idea of a new frontier, focusing on public service, asking what you can do for your country. His immediate concerns were the space race. America had fallen quite far behind in Soviet technology, and he set the goal for an American moon landing by the end of the decade. An early focus of his was the Peace Corps, in the spirit of public service, a program for volunteers to go and aid other countries. It proved to be quite successful. And with communist Cuba, this was seen quite a close threat to America. Relations had been cut off since 1959. The Bay of Pigs invasion was this CIA operation to overthrow the Cuban regime. The plan had originated in the Eisenhower years, but it wasn't used then. Kennedy authorised this plan, but he didn't really give it enough support, especially air support. And so Cuba was able to stop this invasion, proving a great humiliation for the US and the new president. Khrushchev took away from this that he could push around Kennedy, and it ultimately led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Over in Germany, after losing about one-fifth of the population to the West since 1945, East Germany constructed the Berlin Wall to stop this emigration, and it proved to be as controversial as you can imagine. Over in Vietnam, the US was increasingly getting involved due to Kennedy's pro-war cabinet. At the time, 1962, America had 12,000 military advisors in Vietnam. They were not engaged in direct combat, but were trying to train the South Vietnamese troops. The South Vietnamese government was also taking steps, such as with the strategic hamlets policy, protecting peasants in fortified villages from communist influence. And the peasants were vulnerable, primarily because there was vast corruption in the South Vietnamese government. The land really was not distributed fairly or merit-based at all. It was given out to the government's friends. So, the Cuban Missile Crisis, as I mentioned earlier, it was a month-long standoff that brought the world to the edge of nuclear destruction. When the proof of nuclear of, of missiles was first discovered in Cuba, a blockade was initiated around Cuba to stop any more missiles being brought in. The worry was very real, because, as I mentioned earlier, the Soviets previously didn't have any bases close to the US. Now they had a base around 90 miles off the US coast. Those missiles stationed there could reasonably hit the vast majority of the US population. At Point Charlie, it was that height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, the confrontation of army units in Berlin, probably the closest the two really got to a proper war. After over a month of heavy negotiations, the blockade was finally lifted, with the final agreement being that the USSR would remove the Cuban missiles in exchange for the Americans pledging not to invade Cuba. But more quietly, the Americans also agreed to remove their missiles from Turkey and Italy, which, had it been widely known at the time, would have made the outcome far less popular with the US public. All free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Khrushchev has said previously to Mao that, the Ber that Berlin is the testicles of the West, and when he wants to make them squeal, he squeezes there. This speech by Kennedy was pretty much a reinforcement of America's commitment to support them, especially after the construction of the Berlin Wall, and it was, once again, reaffirming support against communism. In the light of the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was signed. It aimed to reduce tensions, and also uh, they agreed on a direct hotline between the USSR and America, to stop the miscommunication that was fraught throughout the Cuban Missile Crisis. 
So, end of 1963, as Kennedy was campaigning in Texas, he was assassinated. And immediately the Soviets were very quick to try to avoid blame as something on this magnitude could very easily start nuclear war. Overall, Kennedy did have some successes in foreign policy, especially with the Peace Corps, as well as through successful negotiations such as the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. He also reaffirmed support for allies in Berlin. However, his failure in the Bay of Pigs invasion allowed Cuba to be used as a missile platform that threatened America, which led to the Cuba Missile Crisis. And whilst he did eventually back civil rights, submitting a bill just before his assassination, he was slow on the uptake. And with Vietnam, he oversaw an increasing involvement there, mainly thanks to his pro-war advisers, which laid the groundwork for America's full intervention in Vietnam. Not a man for president who's seasoned through and through, but not so doggone seasoned that he won't try something new.